There's been news this week of a potential breakthrough in the treatment of Parkinson's disease, which affects over 120,000 people in the UK and around half a million in the United States of America, with up to 25, 30, 40, 50,000 new cases diagnosed every year in those two countries alone. Parkinson's disease is a disorder of movement and it's caused by a shortage of dopamine in the brain, which means that the person has involuntary movements of various kinds, shaking, um, and sometimes finds it very difficult to move at all. It's a kind of stiffness or locking up. It can be treated by dopamine, but dopamine itself has side effects and many people can't be fully treated with sufficient doses to actually prevent the problem from spoiling their daily life. And there are an increasing number of people who are desperate for just about any kind of treatment to help them manage to live with Parkinson's disease. Now there have been many approaches taken in the past. This new one involves the injection of hundreds of millions of virus particles which have a gene which helps the brain to produce GABA. That's another of the substances that the brain makes which is in short supply in Parkinson's disease. And this study showed in a limited number of people that after a number of months there was a 30 to 60 percent improvement in symptoms. So it wasn't a cure but it helped quite a lot. Now the scientists in New York and at Cornell University have been criticized by others in the industry for perhaps not encouraging their patients to use other methods. And one of those other methods involves the use of very tiny electrodes into the brain to stimulate parts of the brain that control movement in an effort to try and rebalance this chemical structure that is getting uh, su into such a problem in people with Parkinson's. Now, quite honestly, putting electrodes inside the brain is quite an invasive process it can produce scar tissue, it raises the risk of epilepsy in the future and all kinds of long-term problems that we can only guess at. And then there's another avenue of treatment that scientists have been looking at, which is using either embryonic stem cells or adult stem cells, injecting these multi-potential cells into the parts of the brain which have been damaged with Parkinson's disease, where they seem to start uh, reversing the, that problem by producing dopamine and GABA in, the, in that local area. However, in some of the studies, the early studies using embryonic stem cells, there was a great disappointment. While these symptoms disappeared entirely in some patients for a few months, after a while another more sinister problem emerged. It appeared that these embryonic stem cells knew no boundaries, no limits to their own natural growth and started to overproduce dopamine. And so the people started to develop toxicity to the very thing that they were short of in the first place. So scientists have been very cautious since then about using embryonic stem cells. But there's another avenue which is perhaps to consider the use of adult stem cells, which are much more stable and easy to control, grow much more slowly, and would be less likely perhaps to produce that kind of challenge that we saw in those early embryonic studies. Adult stem cells, well, where do you find them? These stem cells can be found in just about every tissue we've looked at, including bone marrow, skin, liver, pancreas and brain. Now, the best stem cells for using in the brain would be brain stem cells, but they are difficult to get hold of without damaging the brain further. Except that there is one very small place we can go. In the nose, there is a very small amount of brain tissue called the olfactory bulb. It sticks out of the brain, it comes down through a tiny little hole between the, uh, the part of the brain cavity which holds all the brain and the nose itself. And it's the olfactory bulb that gives you the capacity to smell. And the reason why dogs have a fantastic capacity for smell is they have such a huge olfactory bulb. Now we can manage without that bulb. Uh, you would lose your sense of smell which in turn would uh, mean that you'd taste very little but it's not a life-threatening thing.